did you do that? How did you do that? Uh, it has a zone story that's the size of the Dark Brotherhood slash Thieves Guild storylines, give or take. Uh, it's got a couple delves, a couple objectives, a couple group bosses, uh, and it's got a mini trial. Uh, by mini trial, I mean it is a trial, but it's smaller in scale, but built and balanced for 12 people. Uh, the trial comes in two flavors. Uh, it's called the Asylum Sanctorum. Uh, flavors are normal in veteran modes, as all of our trials are. Uh, this one's a bit more of a choose-your-own-adventure trial. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, you can take on the main boss before defeating his two mini-boss compatriots. Uh, this gives you uh, more rewards and potentially a faster leaderboard time. Or alternatively, you could defeat his mini-bosses first, either one or both of them, and then finish him off like last, which of course would be an easier fight and would give you slightly less reward. Uh, one of the cool new toys for the mini-trial is we have uh, new Asylum Master Weapons. Uh, so I expect people will be excited to see that. Uh, similarly, they come in two flavors. There is the Imperfect, which are available in the normal mode. And then there are, for veterans, the Perfected uh, Asylum Master Weapons, uh, which are available for completing the veteran modes. Um, we also have a new game type for Battlegrounds. It's called Crazy Kings. Uh, it is kind of capture the flag, only way more frantic. Uh, basically, you start out with one flag, and then after several minutes, a second flag, and after a few more minutes, a third flag, and after a few more minutes, a fourth flag. Uh, so you're spending a lot of time running around, and then if that weren't frantic enough, every few minutes or so, the flags actually move location. So it's a lot of movement, and it is definitely crazy. Um, one of the other new features we're particularly happy with is our transmutation system. Yeah. Uh, this this is available via transmutation. Um, uh, why am I blanking on the term? Um, station. Crafting station. Thank you. <laughs> it, it's the simple stuff. <laughs> Um, so basically you can take any weapon or armor that you're not happy with the traits and you can add different traits to it. Uh, this doesn't come for free. You'll need to use transmute crystals, uh, which are rewarded for completing uh, PvE activities like trials, pledges, arenas, as well as PvP activities like rewards for the worthy and battleground end of match rewards. Mm -hmm. Um, of note, jewelry cannot be transmuted, uh, and you must already have researched the desired trait that you're looking to add in. Uh, what else? Uh, we have uh, done some performance improvements, which we hope will increase FPS as well as load times. Um, of two varieties, we've done scene graph improvements, the idea being to load the things that are more pertinent to players first to get them in the game moving quicker. Uh, and then additionally, we've done a pretty major animation memory overhaul. Uh, the long and short is instead of preloading all animations, they are now loaded on the fly. So there's significantly less animations to load. And those two things should combine to be better FPS in game, as well as uh, what we hope are drastically reduced load times for between while you're loading. Gotcha. Um, are you, do you happen to be in yet? Yeah, I'm in. Uh, awesome. Uh, if you want to tell us what your character is, we can get you an invite. It is. Uh, I'll use the gamer tag, don't you? At Zynode. So I'll type that in here, actually, one second. Do, 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 do. There you go. If that works. Perfect. Uh, at Zynode. Yep, yep. Uh, right here. X, Y, N, O, D, E. Correct, yep. If you're live streaming, you can share the link. I'm not live streaming, actually. I'm recording, but I'm not live streaming. Okay, no worries. Uh, reason being is I was trying to set up all my uh, comms and all the rest of it, and for some reason, Skype didn't like it, so uh, it's something I'll have to fix later on. It's, uh, <laughs> Understood. It was, it was messing up for me. Cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah sorry right. about that. I, was just, uh, I didn't want to interrupt if you were live streaming. Um, cool. No, no, you're good. Um, yeah, if you could just send us the 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 link, then um, we'll we'll sort that. 
Of course. Bless you. Thanks, Mike. No worries. All right, so uh, I see that you're currently in the Observatory Prior, which is the clockwork-themed uh, house uh, that's that's going to be for sale. Oh, no, you just jumped to us. I was in there, yep. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I'm just going to kind of give you the guided tour here. Uh, if you have any questions um, about anything that I'm running by or if I'm rambling about something that you're not interested in, just you know, feel free to interrupt me and I'll... Uh, I'll deviate to, to a subject that is more interesting to you and your viewers. Okay. Uh, I, I might point out uh, I am wearing the sanctified silver skin that is available for defeating Holmes with his allies on veteran mode in the Asylum Sanctorum trial. Mm -hmm. uh, and Greg is wearing the Clockwork Curator Polymorph uh, which is available as a drop from a rune box for completing or competing in the same activities uh defeating ohms on veteran mode uh, and he also has the uh scintillant uh dova fly uh which is a pet reward you get for just walking into the brass fortress gotcha and it's a cool little mechanical dragonfly looking thing that's pretty cool how rare is the I, or can you tell me how rare is the drop for the polymorph uh, I probably wouldn't be allowed to tell you, but I don't actually know. Uh, it's rare. Uh, you got it. He didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I'll just uh, start us on our little tour here. Sure. Um, so we're in the outside of the Clockwork City. This is the, the overworld. Uh, everywhere from the edge of the world to the walls of the hub city up ahead of us is called the Radius. And it is the section of the brass forge excuse me, the section of the uh, clockwork city that is unsafe for people to be in there's hostile fabricants out here there's factotums uh taking care of various mechanisms that uh that power all of the underworks of the city um and all of the requisite uh, crafting nodes and treasure chests and uh, monsters and quest locations located here we're going to take a run up towards the brass fortress itself okay we'll take a little quick pass through there So one of the cool things about uh, working with this particular area is we got a chance to explore what uh, a completely uh, artificial environment would look like in the Elder Scrolls. So everything that you see around you, even trees, are all made out of metal. So if you get up close to them, you'll be able to see they have like metal foil leaves. The bark is striated with like copper and uh, other metal components. So everything that you see around you is made out of metal or stone, uh, created by uh to be a, in his mind, a, a perfected uh, version of, of Tamriel. Mm -hmm. This is uh, his, his synthetic version of the world. Uh, but of course, everything being made out of stone and metal provides some challenges for the people who live here. Gotcha. And up ahead of us is the gate to the Brass Fortress, which is the only section of Clockwork City where it is safe and permissible for people to live, even Sothasil's, uh priests. And once we pop inside, we'll be able to take a look around uh, that area. Okay. Again, if those construction workers are making too much noise, let me know, <laughs> and I'll mute them. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, it'll be hard to tell what's uh, the banging from outside and what's this the banging. This is true. From awkward stuff. <laughs> Ambient audio. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So this is the city center of the Brass Fortress, and as I mentioned, the Brass Fortress is the only place that's safe for people to be. Um, so you have a couple of uh, groups of society. There's the Clockwork Apostles, who are a combination of Sothisil's priests, uh, a group of uh, scientists, the governing body of the Brass Fortress, and uh, they also run the guard that protects the city. The Clockwork Apostles are different from other tribunal priests in that they are, I won't say less reverent than some of the other uh, tribunal priests would be, but they're more concerned with emulating their god than they are with giving him uh, lavish and uh, adulation and praise. So the Clockwork Apostles do try to emulate Sothisil, whose statue is uh, here in the center of the town square. Uh, some of them will carry on experiments or try to repeat um, things that Sothisil has done. They will replace limbs on their bodies uh, when they become uh, damaged or you know, just by virtue of uh, the function that they, they fulfill in the city. Uh, here is the heavy armor clockwork apostle style being worn by this guard walking around here. Mm -hmm. And as you can see on some of the components, uh, there are replaced joints, um, just parts of them that make them a little more uh, little more machine than person. Gotcha. Yeah, you can see the hinges in the elbows and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. 
the factotums, uh, of which the polymorph I'm, I'm wearing, uh, they are completely artificial uh, humanoids created by Sothisil to be his functionaries here in the Clockwork City. Most of them are relegated to tasks like repairing uh, broken down machinery or uh, dealing with fabricant infestations or guarding places. But some of them are here in the city to fulfill functions like this commerce delegate is one of the guild traders. There's also one in the tavern off to our left who is the uh, uh, one of the chefs in the city. So there's a, a factotum chef and they are not uh, sentient per se. They do talk to you and they do have a personality, but they don't have a, a free, free will or free thought. Um, but they are Sothisil's way of interfacing with people when he's in one of his uh, periods of seclusion, which happen pretty often. Okay. So we'll hop around here. And like I was saying, outside, uh, as you get up close to some of these trees, you can see that they're, they're not really real trees. Yeah, you can see all the, the metal shining through, like the scratches and such. It's made of, is it made of copper? Some of it's copper, some of it's brass. Uh, the different trees have different metal components depending on which one. So everything that you see that should be alive is fabricated, uh, even some of the grasses, although the grasses are a little more uh, difficult to tell that off. Oh, that's pretty cool. And, yeah, that creates some challenges with uh, how do these people eat. Like once one of the, the big important questions that you ask when you're, when you're designing any world space is, you know, what do the people who live here eat? Uh, and the answer to that question, unfortunately, is uh, they have to make do with what they get uh, from outsiders or they can eat some of the fabricant meat, which is not particularly palatable, <laughs> or they get a lot of their food from these nutriment dispensers that are scattered throughout the city, and it'll just give it kind of a, a squirt of gray flavorless paste that'll feed you for the day. And it's a, actually a big point of contention for a lot of the people here in Clockwork City. Um, and down here, we're in the section of, uh, of the Brass Fortress called uh, Slag Town, which also uh, houses the Outlaws Refuge, which is back there in the corner. Okay. Uh, the people people of Slagtown are those who either couldn't make the cut as clockwork apostles, weren't interested in being servants of a god, or got lost here. Uh, people who come into Clockwork City either come here specifically to study and become uh, a clockwork apostle, or they get lost here through, you know, teleportation magic gone awry, or some of them come here looking to uh, try to make it rich, and then they can't really find an easy way out, so they're, they're trapped here. Okay. So Slagtown is the uh, place where all those people uh, end up collecting, kind of in the lower part of the city. And there's that uh, uncomfortable societal striation between the Clockwork Apostles, who they care and they try to help out, but it's really not their their sphere of, of influence. And then the Tarnished, who live down here in Slagtown, who try to make ends meet and try to make it so that uh, they can survive from day to day. And they'll ask you to do some you know tasks around the Clockwork City for them periodically. Mm -hmm. This is also our daily area, so once you've completed a fair amount of content, you have the option to come back here and pick up uh, one of four or up to four daily quests. Mm -hmm. uh, group boss, solo, or uh, uh, otherwise, There's a couple crafting quests, things like that. But yeah, okay. that's one of the things that we look into greatly as we're looking at it is what do these people do? What do they eat? What do they drink? And that has heavily influenced what, what our content is. So we're at the <clears throat> base of the central spire of the Clockwork City. And because Clockwork City is built uh, to emulate Tamriel, the center of Tamriel is the White Gold Tower in the middle of Cyrodiil. Uh, so this, this central spire in Clockwork City is meant to be the, the allegory to that uh, here. Gotcha. So everything radiates out from this central point in the Clockwork City. We're going to run up into the substructure of this place, which is called the Clockwork Basilica which is the center of worship. It is also the government center and uh, a place where when South Asil does come out of seclusion, this is where he usually is. Okay, that makes sense. And because, uh, you, as you get a chance to see along the sides here, uh, because there aren't real trees in Clockwork City, uh, we had to uh, work with our art team to develop what, is, what do bookshelves look like in the Clockwork City? What do they write on? And the answer is they engrave on metal plates, which uh, are able to withstand the uh, harsh environment. Uh, they're a much more durable form of data storage. Then uh, it gave us a, a way to kind of explore the mixture of, uh, of Tamrielic uh, data collection and uh, the pseudo technology that exists here in the Clockwork City. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, they turned out really cool. Our, our art department did some really cool stuff. I think they really enjoy being able to kind of uh, stretch into a slightly different genre. It makes a lot of sense because when you first look at this, you're like, oh, okay, they've got metal plaques instead. But when you see the reason behind it, it makes a lot of sense. 
Mm -hmm. It's really, really awesome. So these side chambers will lead to sections that you deal with throughout the main story of Clockwork City. Uh, mm -hmm. They're also the locations where the different uh, government officials of the Clockwork Apostles live. Uh, there's a couple of levels to this place. And back here in the main chamber is this uh, kind of uh, auditorium lecture hall area, which is where the Clockwork Apostles do a lot of their... Uh, it's a combination of uh, academic... Uh, uh, location as well as a center of worship. So the Clockwork Apostles will line up and seat themselves on these benches here while a guest speaker or maybe Sothasil himself is up on the stage talking about a new discovery or a new uh, a new thesis or something along those lines. But uh, Sothasil himself uh, will go into long periods of seclusion, sometimes decades, sometimes centuries long, where even his own priests don't get to speak with him. Um, and it is for this reason that worship in the Clockwork City can be a little a little strained sometimes. You'll have Clockwork Apostles who come here to join the Order and worship South Sill, but never meet him in their lifetimes. Uh, so it, it's it's some interesting um, uh, points of uh, of contention within the Clockwork Apostles themselves mm -hmm. as a result. And just there's another one of the side chambers with some uh, some quest relevant rooms. And here's one of those uh, nutriment dispensers I was talking about earlier. This one happens to uh, be tapped out, at least for me. Um, but it's kind of gives you that food paste, which is an item uh, you can yes. you can consume. I did see this. Good food. <laughs> it's um, it was like a uh, almost six k health or something you get from one of the food things. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Uh, yep, increased max health by six thousand two hundred seventy-seven for wow. thirty-five minutes. And I have heard they taste like chicken. Everything tastes that like is, chicken. That is not true. <laughs> <laughs> that is very not true. <laughs> so this is a... Oh, I see. Oops, I picked up a quest. Oh, no, no worries. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of... Uh... Uh, side content in addition to the main story that we created for Clockwork City. Um, so it was, it was nice to see and, and make content for people, uh, for the characters who live in the Clockwork City. Like, what, what are the things that they need to do from day to day? You know, how, how do their lives, how are their lives affected by living in this place? Of course. Um, so this I... section of the... Sorry, go oh, on. Sorry, go ahead. Go on. Nope, you go ahead. <laughs> um, if you're pacing it, for example, and you're just uh, casually going through and completing the, qu the quest and the content in that, how many hours of play, roughly, do you estimate there are? So when we built this, we spec'd out for about 10 hours of content, but I've run through it enough times, and if you listen to all the dialogue and you look for all the stuff, it'll probably run you 12 or 15 if you're, if you're really looking for everything. Oh, nice. So this part of the Brass Fortress is the safe part. Um, but if you go out into some of these other locations, like the reactor district, which we're going to kind of walk around through right now, uh, people aren't allowed to be out here, not even the Clockwork Apostles. So the factotums here are performing duties, and you being out here is, is kind of uh, against the law, so to speak. So the factotums out here will be hostile. Uh, some Clockwork Apostles do uh, hold, uh, hold dominion out here, and the reason for doing so is you can create a bunch of... Uh, uh, not necessarily legal uh, experiments without having anybody bothering you because you're out here in the in the lawless section. Okay. So you can get away with whatever you want. There's a few quests that take you out here as well. Okay. So we did try to play with verticality a lot since uh, when you have a environment like this uh, that is completely you know, constructed, uh, we were able to play around with, you know, well, how do people uh, make best use of the space that they live in? So there's a couple of... Uh, levels of verticality to this place. You see the catwalks above us, which we're going to run along the sky bridge. Oh, you can get up there? Two recipes already. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I did see some of the furniture that um, was in here as well. It's really, really good. Because there's no wood or anything, is there? It's all... Metallic. Yeah, yeah, there it is, yeah. Now, you will be able to get uh, wood crafting nodes uh, out here, uh, but a lot of that is scrap wood brought by outsiders that gets you know, lost when their wagons break down or uh, they otherwise uh, lose uh, the ability to carry it with them. Mm -hmm. 
So there are a couple of uh, these fabricant creatures that we see here. These are the verminous fabricants, and anyone who played um, the Tribunal expansion to test three Morrowind might recognize these things. Yep, uh, I do. They're, <laughs> yep, they're a predatory uh, a creature that is part flesh, part clockwork. Um, but those fabricants come in other varieties too, because this place is meant to emulate Tamriel. There are some Tamrielic creatures that have fabricant versions, like the Kagudi there on our left. But there are also beetles, nix hounds, nix oxes, uh, little critters all around the place. Um, these critters are, are my favorite. These skibatons, the little clockwork wind up mice. Uh, these things oh, are wow. adorable. They're all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> One less. Yep, yep. He had a, some stuff on him I needed to pick up. <laughs> if I remember correctly, there's actually an achievement for killing 100 of them, too. Okay, we'll be getting that. <laughs> <laughs> so this sky bridge here takes us up to the top level. But there's also a sub-level to the Brass Fortress. Whoa. There's a, uh, an underground called the Mechanical Fundament, which is um, it's a combination of a quest location, but it's also sort of an expansion of the overworld. just kind of takes you underground. Mm -hmm. uh, but you'll have all like the requisite uh, harvest nodes and stuff will be down there, the creatures to hunt, treasure chests to find. Basically all the stuff that you would expect in, in the outside is also down there. Actually, where are we right now? I'll run you by the Asylum Sanctorium, actually, which is the entrance is right over here. Excellent. This is insane. Yeah, it was really fun working on this and developing what this looks like, how it's built. Level design is really clever here. I was a huge fan of what everybody on the team did. It's really, really good. Uh, cool looking. I remember um, Elder Scrolls 3 in the first place, especially that particular expansion as well. Um, this is absolutely amazing. I did not expect it to look like this. It was, it was really challenging to... Like... Uh, try to call back to what that area looked like but because it was so relatively small uh, yeah, back it, was. Then, it was that one fairly contained dungeon we had a lot of leeway with uh, what this place would look like outside of that of that one place uh, so it was challenging to to nail down that look and, and also remain true to what had come before it's very so unique a lot as well in comparison mm -hmm. to dwemer like the yeah clockwork dwemer. clockwork and dwemer are uh, deliberately visually separate and distinct uh, for a reason. A lot mm -hmm. of Dwemer stuff is considered blasphemous by the Tribunal, so we have to uh, be careful not to you know, reuse Dwemer parts while we're working on developing the Blackbrook City, because that would be that would be really, really lower and appropriate. And so, you know, we were careful when we were developing the look to make sure it, it should look a little similar, because they're based on similar mechanical principles, but uh, for the most part, it's not the same thing. We want to yeah. make sure of that. So this is the entrance to the trial uh, proper, which we'll pop our heads in real quick to take a look at some stuff. Mm -hmm. The time was much quicker than I would have expected. Uh, yeah, same here. I was it's, waiting for it's it. New, <laughs> it's a new scene graph uh, stuff. It's working really, really well. Yeah. This is your uh, staging area. Gives you the associated quest. Uh, There's the alienist, who's the uh, the quest giver there. We'll just kind of poke our heads in real quick. This is the run up to the main encounter. If you look off to the right, uh, that's uh, one of the bosses flying around out there. Where? Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, he's flapping around out there. Oh, that's very cool. Huh. Yeah, it was cool to be able to get him for the trial. It's something we worked pretty hard on. You you will see him later. Man, I didn't see the um the flying around bit before. That was really cool. Awesome. And as sort of a visual indicator, you see both the statues when you've defeated those respective mini bosses they yeah. kneel. Ah, so you've run around here, I think. You probably got the general chest. <laughs> yep, so if you popped open these two latches, you could run right in there and fight the boss. Uh, he will he will destroy our faces if it's just three of us. Um, but I just wanted to give you kind of a look inside for your recording. Uh, kind of see get, what they did. Should we get wrecked? Yeah, we can get punched. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think our odds are very good, but let's do it. One percent. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it. 
it's been really exciting to see the the, he's the big huge, isn't try he? things on uh, on PTS. Yeah, he's gigantic. Whoops, wrong bar. And throughout this fight, if you do it this way, he'll end up with buddies. So yeah. It gets it gets harder and harder. Charles damage dealer, get in. <laughs> this template character is not built the way I would do this normally for tank. <laughs> <laughs> Eight percent, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh. nope, nope, I got roasted. Didn't roll out time. Uh -oh. <laughs> Run away up oh, there I went. <laughs> Wrecked. <laughs> cool. Sorry, I'm way shrining. <laughs> <Well, laughs> so that's nine uh... percent damage, I think we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Want to check out one of the group bosses, or sure. yeah, those we can. I'm, I'm sure we can uh, three man. Now, we have uh, two world bosses in the Clockwork City uh, zone, uh, which are basically the same way that we would do them in other zones. So they're they're scaled for four people, um, two if you're pretty well geared, one if you're really well geared and also really good at our game. I did kill one when we first when PTS first came out, but I haven't seen the bosses since then properly. I don't think. Which one did you look at? Do you know? Do you remember? I killed the the robot guy that has the jetpack type thing. He flies okay, in the air. Perfect. Cool. Yeah, we'll look at the other one. Then. His mechanics were really cool. And I did see it yesterday briefly for about three seconds because I went onto PC and there were somewhere in the region of about four million people. Yeah. The <laughs> so saw, you saw him for a half a second? Yeah, I saw a Destro ulti drop and then the boss disappeared. <laughs> there were so many people. Yeah, I was running around doing it uh, yesterday evening and they're just it's it's got the post launch crush of people. Oh definitely. It did handle well though. Like it, there wasn't any uh, real issues lag wise as far as that many people in one area is concerned. It was pretty good. Excellent. Yeah, I, I I love to see Launch Gay stand in a, in a spot near a way shrine or something and just watching the people run past. It's oh, so cool yeah. to check it out. And as you're playing and you get a little deeper and you start seeing more and more people, it's definitely one of my favorite parts. Yep. It's like seeing a Dolman rush all after one boss. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah. I remember when you released uh, Thieves Guild, I think it was, and um, there was a new motifs. And... The bosses were just infested <laughs> with, like, half the community were on one boss. It was insane. <laughs> I've never seen it's so many some... people in one place. Yeah, it's the same sort of idea here, where those bosses are also vectors for the two motif styles that can drop uh, in daily quest uh, reward boxes. Um, some of the side quests also have the same chance to do that. And the bosses will also have a chance to drop motif chapters uh, that you can pick up. The nice. two motif chapters are the Clockwork Apostle armor, which you've seen on the guards and yeah. a lot of the NPCs around here in the town. That's really and the cool. other one is a Nocturnal cultist-themed armor, because Nocturnal is involved with the main storyline here in Clockwork City. Okay. And you'll see that with the other group boss running a bunch. So this, the, with the style of the guards, you can actually make already. Mm -hmm. That's really good. I like that one. Especially the light armor as well. That's very, very cool. Yeah, the light armor is pretty cool. There's some um, sets that also drop from um, not only those uh, bosses, but the daily loot boxes and such. I believe the sets are, if my memory serves correctly, there's Livewire, which is, I want to say, heavy armor. Mm -hmm. uh, Mad Tinkerer, which is the light armor. Both of those are Clockwork Apostle. There's Unfathomable Darkness, which is medium uh, nocturnal motif. And I can't remember the other one off the top of my head, but... Uh, a couple of sets that drop just by virtue of doing stuff around the town. Plus three craftable sets um, uh, that you find at crafting stations around uh, uh, Clockwork City. There's three crafting sta uh, crafting set locations here. I'm gonna cheat and put rapids on because my horse is too slow. <laughs> by all <laughs> means. Oh yeah, it's alright. I used all the books to. Yeah, I did. I normally do, but I didn't. I didn't do that yet. Hold on, actually, they're in consumables, aren't they? Yep. Supplies. Oh, we could just we could just help it. Okay, I'll run. It's not too far. Have rapids. 
You're the speed of my horse on foot. <laughs> there's there's something crazy. wrong there. Okay, there's no grass here. The horse isn't eating. I can't run fast. <laughs> and, and you've probably seen it, but if you'll note the way Shrine asset. Ah, they look it, awesome. It is hooked. And then if you look straight up, it is the similar look on the sky. Yeah, we're inside uh, out. Yeah, we're inside the dome in which Clockwork City sits. Yeah, it's not. You have to. Yeah, you shrink down to enter it, but you're both in and not in Tamriel. Um, so it's it's uh, this is an interesting little dichotomy there. This is very similar to the transmutation uh, station as well, isn't it? Design. Yeah, you see yeah. this. You see this design a lot. The uh, the mm -hmm. concentric rings, the rotating gears. Uh, that that's a repeating motif. Uh, even in some of the armor sets, like the factotum components that I'm wearing, have that on the shield and on the, the pauldrons. We have that kind of hard edges with arcs and delicate angles inside uh, gotcha. inside those hard edges. So when you see that, that's your cue that it's a uh, clockwork rather than Dwemer. Off to the left, that large building that you see there is one of our uh, quest locations. There's a storyline associated with that location. Okay. Uh, that is the Mnemonic Planisphere, and that is a location that Sothosil uses to store distracting and or excess memories. He kind of puts them in solid state storage um, so that he has enough room in his brain for other more important things. Oh, I see. It's like a, a memory library. Essentially, yeah. The design of these uh, rocks was an interesting uh, process on, on the part of our fixture designers. Uh, so there's this uh, process that I had known nothing about until the, they were explaining it to me called sintering. Uh, mm -hmm. And it is a way to construct uh, 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 objects and, uh, and you, know, you know, stone blocks and buildings and whatnot uh, by using uh, burning material on layers. So it's kind of, it's kind of got this like artificial layering to it. Uh, it's a really cool process. Yeah. Fabrican. <laughs> <laughs> I, love I do like those ones. They're really, really cool. Yeah, they're really cool. I'm a huge fan of them. They run like raptors. Oh, mouse. <laughs> Two down. Two. <laughs> I need to go. <laughs> so like we're running up above this uh, gulch here, but uh, again, we're playing with the verticality of the zone a lot. So we're up on an upper level, but there's also the entire gorge down there for uh for quest activity and uh, creatures are down there all of that water that you see isn't really water it's this like oil lubricant runoff that uh collects in the basin when it uh gets flushed out of the machines i see so the size of it like i mean of course gold coast is quite uh well, not flat it's quite hills and stuff but it's it's one plane whereas this you've got a similar sort of real estate but it's, it feels like you've got a lot more actually because of the upstairs downstairs kind of thing yeah, we were able to play with that a lot because of the fact that there's so much artificial construction here. Yeah. Oh, wolves. So this section of the Clockwork City um, is uh, being partially invaded by, uh, by Nocturnal's agents. Slight overkill there. <laughs> the kind of those like creatures mermaid. that you saw... Yeah, those creatures that you saw are shadowy versions of, of Tamrielic monsters, but also Shrikes, which are Nocturnal's uh, answer to like the Dramora or the Zivkin. They're the, the humanoid functionary of, of the associated Daedric Prince. Oh, okay. They're like mermaids with feet. Whoa. This is a little portal that'll take you into part of Nocturnal's realm. These are called gloaming gates, and they are how Nocturnal and her agents move around. Well, Nocturnal do what she pleases as she's a Daedric prince, but uh, her Daedra and her cultists will move around through those gates. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a little pocket of, uh, of Evergloam, which is Nocturnal's realm. And these creatures are the second group boss of the zone. They are called Wraiths of Crows. Uh, and they are you know, large, monstrous uh, Daedra that are not really uh, 
you know, they're semi-humanoid. They don't have a, they have an alien thought process and they're, they're highly magical, uh, monstrous creatures. And I think we'll be able to take these guys. We can take them. We got Ohms down to what? 91% <laughs> we can take these. Oops, I just double casted that. Um, well, I won't ask too many questions you're not allowed to answer, but are these uh, particular models kind of uh, a new idea for possible future enemies? Because this is a whole new model. Yep, this is a totally new creature. Uh, I mean, we, we do try to... Uh, Oop. Well, I'm, I'm trying not to get stabbed here. <laughs> I got you. So as they as they die, they empower one another. Gotcha. And as more content comes out, we do try and, and make sure we're adding new stuff to it. So yeah, this is a new beast that we're we're especially pleased with, and undoubtedly you will see it in in other areas. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a lot of fun. It it turned out really cool. Trying to talk in tank is uh not conducive. Oh, I know that one. I talk and stream, I die all the time. <laughs> oh! See, that's my <laughs> fault. I should have been talking. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, man. It seems, um... Well, per per expansion, I guess, or DLC, of, sorry. Um, it seems to have the most, what well, I've seen so far, newer uh, models <clears throat> in terms of enemies. Like the, the female characters, the enemies that we killed a moment ago, they look new. These are new, the fabricants and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that was a similar one in uh, Morrowind, but still the models are quite recent. So there's a lot of new enemies come from that. And of course, um, the other world boss as well, he's completely new. So yeah, there was done. a lot of uh, not a new character design and, and rigging work that got done for uh, for animations in this zone. It was, uh, it, was, it was a lot. It was a lot to do. Definitely. You popped in just as we're leaving. Yay! <laughs> I got a plan. Did my job. Oh, kick my head. <laughs> oh, that's right. Witch's Fest is running on VPS. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got what did I get? Skull. What did I get? Oh, Witch's Corpse wrapped. Purple recipe. Get in. Nice. Oh, there you yeah. go. <laughs> but it looks like you've got a lot of new uh, models and such in this particular DLC. Yeah, certainly. Since since it was such a different look, we Makes found sense. much like you were saying. You know, there's when it comes to furniture, if you're placing a merchant, you put a table down, but we need a metal table now, and yeah. it's got barrels and boxes near it, so we need a metal box and we need a metal barrel, and so, you know, we have a tent and we need a metal tent. Yeah. So yeah, there was there was a lot of that, which was really exciting to get the opportunity to, to do. It's uh. Your other DLCs and expansions and such are, well, like you said, already part of Tamriel itself. So you can have similarities with the enemies and all the rest of it. But this is very, from what I can see, unique in an, it's an overall change of style. So everything has to f kind of fit with that. So yeah, I can see where you're, you have a table, the barrels and everything all have to fit each other. You can't just have one of the other ones. Yeah, it was definitely a challenge to uh, to get all that stuff and still make it Imagine. feel like the same game. Yeah, definitely. Just kind of skirted down the cliff face so that we could get uh, down to this gulch here. And we'll loop around and we'll look at one of our delves, I think. And do you have any questions for us in the meantime? As we're coming close to the um, end of our time. I'm getting there. I'm still looking. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <clears throat> So the underground, well, like the delve itself, I think this one I did briefly go to. Maybe not. Maybe I went to the other one. And obviously the world boss that we just killed, that's kind of like the underworld as such to this area. Uh, to a certain to a certain degree, yeah. It's pretty cool. Do you know what? I didn't even realize until you said a moment ago that this was uh, oil because I didn't look. I just looked at all the const constructions, and then when you get closer, you can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... <clears throat> You can find uh, some parts where there's there's water that's collected on top, like you just did there. Yeah. There are fish that live in this water, uh, although they're they're fabricant fish, and there's an associated achievement for that. 
and swimming through the stuff is gross. It leaves like that that <laughs> rainbow color trail. Oh yeah, I see it. Gross sounds. <laughs> Argonians have a, a really good passive to get out of here quick. I <laughs> know <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's pretty cool. Do you still? Uh, are there any deep parts with slaughterfish in there? Uh, none of the parts of the water that are that is in this zone, the water quote unquote that is in this zone, uh, has slaughterfish living in it. Uh, okay. None of it is that. None of it is quite that deep. Gotcha. So we'll just poke our heads in here super quick. Uh, sure. This is the halls of regulation. Uh, so Clockwork City, being an artificial environment, uh, has uh, it needs to have clean, breathable air. It needs to have some drinkable water. Uh, the weather needs to be controlled, and this facility handles all of that. Uh, okay. So everything that uh, that you would think to make this place livable uh, is is made so because of this location. Uh, of course, people aren't supposed to be here, so the factotums are going to be hostile to you. Uh, although the facility is having some issues, so that's what the quest line associated with this deal uh, deals with. Um, but yeah, this entire location uh, is is a facility for all of that environmental stuff. Okay, so are these uh, not programmed the way they're supposed to be and rebelling, or uh, to a certain extent, way? some of them are not carrying out their functions anymore. Uh, gotcha. But having an having a clockwork apostle able to come in here and set things right would uh would is part of the quest gotcha i saw the um the dudes in the front the the doorway as we come in did i just kill a mouse i did <laughs> three out of 100 <laughs> yeah. um when we came in there was like uh, a section where they are stood up and one of them looks like he's uh turned off is that like a charge in bay or where they store them or oh yeah let me uh run back and show you how that works So these charging nooks for these factotums, uh, you'll see this this pattern throughout. Uh, so the, wherever you see these uh, little charging bays are where factotums go to uh, to go into recharge mode or get worked on by uh, other factotum technicians. Um, so when they're here, they can uh, they can recharge. Like all, uh, if you remember, like Dwemer constructs, mm -hmm. they're all powered by soul gems. So when you kill them, there'll be a soul gem that is actually the power source for it that you can do. Yeah. All the clockwork technology works sort of the same way. So all the little fabricants that you see running around uh, are powered by soul gem components, and so are these factotums. Gotcha. And they can get recharged by uh, being in these stations. Okay. So I'm assuming these probably come to life as well. Not some of them guys. can. Some of them, yeah. Some of them stay in power down mode. But uh, as you're running throughout, sometimes they'll switch on and they'll come after you because they're in kind of a, a low power state, not mm -hmm. completely turned off. Actually, I think this one up there will do just that, so you get a chance to see what it looks like. Does that? Oh, I see. Yeah, he wasn't. Uh, I couldn't target him until I got close enough. Mm. He kind of woke up. He's got surveillance running. These little things are firepot spiders, uh, as their name would show. Uh, they have that kind of uh, <laughs> he jumped at you. fire dome on them, uh, and they have two modes, so they can shoot that firepot at you or run at you and explode, and they switch over to a more melee-oriented mode. But for the most part, they're ranged attackers. Gotcha. Whoa. Can we get that ability? That looks really cool. <laughs> <laughs> the flamethrower arm? Yep. <laughs> I've talked to Rumble about that one. <laughs> <laughs> and similar to everything else, there's a number of new clockwork-themed traps. So you okay. see a couple different things. I don't know if you saw, but we walked past and there was a flame trap. I think it, it might have jumped on Greg and not you. Yeah, and I did. Yeah, the pressure plates will trigger this. Oh, nice. I did see, um, I, I will call it dangerous environment, if you like, dangerous uh, parts of the environment where you're outside and you have uh, like steam holes on the floor. Mm -hmm. and they, they damage you. I did see those. Yeah, some of them could damage you if you're standing right in the steam jet. I recognize this. <laughs> oh, it. Oldie but goodie. Did you kill that? Oh, no, no, it gets goes in the ground. That's cool. Yeah, yeah it's. it's... Huh. Just pop through to the back here. Of course, I step on the thing because I'm not paying attention. There we go. Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> All these uh, sneaky ideas for traps have <laughs> slightly yeah, they... intrigued as to what could come later in dungeons. 
<laughs> I'm sure uh, Finnegan is hard at work figuring out how to use these. <laughs> sure he is. <laughs> Oh, never dare. Oh, bags are full. Story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've seen... Oh, another mouse. If you ever see any of my streams, you'll see that I am always full. <laughs> I pick up everything. Another mouse. Five down. 95 to go. Yep, yep. Man, design-wise, there's so much in this. Oh, yeah, we really got that. to play with uh, some some great visuals too. Just the use of the artificial uh, construction plus the verticality. Just we get these great vistas like that when you walk into the room and you see just this huge workshop factory area. This is insane. This is another one of the. This is one of the Dell bosses of the area, so I'm sure he'll drop a plunder skull as well. <laughs> Good. Oh, trap. What was that? Won't make quick work of her. Oh, I can't even do to it. Live wire, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the sets. So they drop the um the three sets in the mm -hmm. open area. Are uh, these are dropped in the trial as well, aren't they? Uh that I don't know off the top of my head. I'm not sure what those drop tables look like. But it could very well be though. Okay. I believe so, but I'm not positive. Gotcha. Divine's belt. I won't get that on live. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the problem with playing on PTS. You get taunted. That's the, that's what the transmutation. station is I can for. change it though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> cool. Well, I think that uh, pretty much gets us toward the end of our of our little tour there. You have any other questions for us? Um, about this DLC or about the game? Um, in general, we will answer what we can. Uh, this is for everybody else, actually. This isn't just for me. Um, and you probably can't answer it. Are you planning on ever doing any jewelry crafting? You were right. We can't answer it. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can we have a mammoth mount? A mammoth mount? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will definitely float that past the ground store. No promises, but I, I love the idea. You've got the little tiny one. Just need to stretch it and put a saddle on it. That's right. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, this is really, really cool. I really like it. Uh, visually and content-wise as well. Obviously, I haven't seen all the content yet. I've seen a little bit of it, but it's very, very cool. Um, especially the idea about the new trial. I like the fact that it's quick. Because um, there are, of course, that you've got really long trials of lots of ads and monsters and all that kind of stuff. But this one is kind of a get-in, get-out kind of scenario where you can get into the heavy stuff quite quickly. I really like that. And yeah, it's nice for people that are, you know, like, probably like you and I, that, you know, we, we work all day and then we come home and we have a couple hours to play and we yeah. still want to do this, the trial in-game content. So, you know, or on a night where not everybody on the team, you know, can make it for the entire duration of the time. Just pop into one of these trials, you know, knock it out, get all of the, get all the loot from it, and try again one of the other ones another night. Exactly. So, yeah, it's, it's good for that. In terms of the weapons, um... I know that there's the imperfect versions and there's a perfect version as well. So if you do it on normal, you can get the lesser version. And if you do it on vet or the harder version, I, I think, of vet, you can get the perfect ones. With that in mind, is there any um, possibility or, or, or thought towards doing that for perhaps Maelstrom and DSA as well? Um, what do you think, Jeremy? I... Like a lesser version of them. I like the idea. I'm not sure. It's definitely something we can talk about, and 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 I know it has come up. I just we're, we haven't decided what we might do. Gotcha. But yeah, we'll also be interested to see what the public opinion is of, of the imperfect versus the perfected one. I've seen them and I've tried them. I can tell you what I've seen of them so far, and it's that um, they're very unique to play styles. They um they've they don't fit into everything, which is actually a good, a good thing because that gives you uh, diversity with the three different types of major weapons: the DSA ones, the Maelstrom, and the Asylum ones. With them all being completely different to each other, you're going to see lots of different types of uh, character builds, which I really, really kind of support myself on the channel as well. So I do like them; they're very, very cool. 
there's not a massive difference between the imperfect and the perfect ones. Um, but getting one or the other will definitely satisfy all players, in my opinion, because they'll have a chance to have something really awesome without needing to do it. The really, really hard stuff, because not everybody can, and of course not everybody gets into them. So I think That's it does give I that like. freedom. It's... I do like that. Oops. Cool. All right. Well, anything else, or we want to wrap it up? I think that's it for now. I think. Cool. My brain that's is well. frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Well, okay, I screamed so that on my stream. <laughs> you didn't ask him this. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for having me. Much appreciated. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, have a chance to run through all that stuff on live and let me know what you think. Awesome. I will do. And of course, um, oh, there was one more thing. One more. By all means. We need a mini map on console. <laughs> 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 okay that's fair that's it um but yeah i will give you guys the link to this as soon as uh, the video goes live of course and again thank you very much for having me hugely appreciate it yeah anytime. brilliant thank you thank, thanks for your time michael and if there's anything else you any other further questions feel free to ping them over to to me or to Ika, and we'll sort them out for you awesome and of course thank you very much for your so the game is insane love it brilliant awesome have a great rest of the day you too. Bye-bye. Okay, bye, guys. Bye-bye.